If you look up to an image, not only will you worship it, but you want to be like it. Right. You'll blind your hair. You'll cut that natural wool off that God has himself. Right. You want to walk after his ways, after his policies. Right. But God has his own policies in the scriptures. Jeez. We have to follow that to get out of captivity. Right. We have to be patient in our condition. Because we are at the bottom of society. Right. We are getting shot down in the streets. Right. We live in the worst neighborhoods. Right. The slums, the ghettos. Right. So the Bible is written to save our people out of their condition. Right. Because what condition are we in? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Bring it up. This is the condition of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in America. All over the world. We are captive to other nations. We are in the bottom of society. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 27, 28, and verse 47. Bring it up. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So because you're not serving God, you don't want to hear God's commandments. We break his Sabbath day. You have never been taught the Sabbath day. Jeez. So for this purpose, you were put in captivity. Right. Until you get it right. Read. For the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things, because this earth belongs to you. Right. right. But you have been brought down to a low condition. Right. You have been brought down in society, taught that you are nothing. But you're the greatest thing walking the face of the earth. Right. right. You're the greatest thing on the face of the earth. Keep reading. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore shall you do what? Read that again. Serve thine enemies. The Bible said we should serve our enemies. Brother in the black shirt over here. How you doing, man? What's your name? Darnell. Darnell? Yeah. Okay, Darnell, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question, Darnell. Yes, sir. Read, read it from the top again. Read that, read that verse, tw uh, 28 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Bring it up, Darnell. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So, this is a prophecy in Deuteronomy. Are you familiar with the history with Moses? Somewhat? Yes, sir, Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Because I want to show you who he's speaking to. So Moses is speaking to a particular people. Right. Because Moses was delivering the Israelites out of Egypt, right? So he was speaking to them specifically, not to all nations, because God only cares to save his people. Right. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Well, this is going to tell you who Moses is speaking to in the whole book of Deuteronomy. Read. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So these are the words that Moses spake unto all Israel. So we should question ourselves. Well, who is Israel? You know who Israel is? No. That's okay. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 48. We're going to show you who Israel is according to this Bible. Right. Because our people must know this history. Jeez. We must know who's who according to the Bible because certain things apply to this people and certain things don't apply to other people. Read. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Bring it up. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So Moses told the Israelites that they were going to serve their enemies. Why would they have to serve their enemies? Why would, we, why would Israelites have to serve their enemies? Let's see why. Give me verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Because yep. the reason why they had to serve their enemies back then is the same reason why we're serving them today. Right. Read. But it shall come to pass. So Moses warned them, telling them it's going to come to pass. Read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we didn't listen to God. He was warning us if we didn't listen to God, something was going to happen. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So he told them that they had to listen to God's commandments. What are some, some of God's commandments? I'm pretty sure you know some of them. Some of God's commandments? Yes. What are some commandments? Oh, uh, it's, um... Thou shalt not do what? Kill. Right? Steal. Right? And uh, judge, criticize, well... In a sense. Yeah. Do our people do that today? Do they kill each other today? Yep. Do we steal from each other today? Yep. So it's evident that this uh, sin is still prevalent on the earth. Right. So he warned them back then, just like the prophets are warning you right now, right. the reason why we're in captivity is because we break God's commandments. Right. Continually. Back then, and we're still breaking them today. Right. right. Going back to verse 48. So it repeats itself. Right. right. So it repeats itself. Right. There's a punishment for your disobedience. Right. There's a reward for you being obedient. Right. right. But we're right. living in the conditions of the curses, the punishments. This is the state that we're in today. Let's prove that. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Bring it so, up. so let me make sure you're with me. Who is Moses speaking to? He's speaking to everybody? Or he's speaking to who? That be read. Jesus? No, he's speaking to Israel. Israel, Israel. He's speaking to Israel. We read that, remember? Okay. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies.
enemies. So we're serving our enemies. Just like we served them back then, we're still serving them today. Read. Right. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who sent against us? Who, who sent enemies against us? Which the Lord shall send against thee. God sent our enemies against us because we broke his commandments. Right. So he was warning them back then, just like we're warning y'all today. Read. Right. In hunger. In what? In hunger. So if you want food, right, where do you got to go? You go to your own people? Nah, this ain't my hometown, from Flowtown. Okay, you go to Flowtown, where's Flowtown? Florence, South Carolina. Florence, okay. So, where do you go in Florence to get food? I go to my, I got family back, I go home. Okay, but, but do they get it from grocery stores or do they own their own food? They got, they, they own, grow their own garden and stuff. Like okay, that. okay, and they pay what? They pay yeah. taxes, right? Yep. So, at, at the end of it all, when you trace it all back to who's in charge, it goes right back to your enemy. That's right. right. Even if you grow your own crop, if you don't pay your taxes, that land will be taken away from you. Right. Yeah. You gotta buy certain things, certain seeds and stuff. Comes from your enemies. Can you read? Right. And in thirst. And in thirst. If you want water, where you gotta go? If you want water, can you just go ahead and go in your backyard and get water? Nope. No. Guess what? Store. Right. You got to go to the store that's owned by your oppressors. Right. Because guess what? If you was to, if it was to rain right now, and you try to take a bucket to collect that rainwater, that's actually illegal here. Right. You can't do that. They made a law to where you can't collect a natural resource. That's showing you that you're in captivity today. Yeah. You're right. in an oppression right now. Read. And in nakedness. Did you know you have to serve your enemies, brother? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. How do you know that? I won't want to drink that water that rain any old way. Hold on, stay, stay there. Uh, don't go nowhere, brother. Say that again. Listen to y'all, fellas. Right. It didn't, but, come, it didn't come from my Christian upbringing, for sure. Come over here, I can hear you. I'm sorry. I said it wasn't from my, my uh, real Christian upbringing, for sure. Right, so what Because what did they teach you? They taught me that I wasn't supposed to serve. I was supposed to, to put them up under my feet. Right, they told you you were supposed to put them up under your feet. But who was it them? Did they ever point it out to you who that was? Nope. No. No. They just said, you're fighting against the devil. Right. My mother will wake up in the morning and say, oh, the devil after me. Who is he? Bring it out. What are you talking about? Then she start naming bills, certain things that keep us in bondage. Right. But there's a person connected to all that. Read that from the top. I want you to hear this, brother, because this history is for you. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. What's your name, bro? Dominate. Say again. Dominate. Donovic? Dominate. Dominate. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you, Dominate. Nice to meet you. Hey, don't go nowhere, brother. Where you going? We ain't got to the point yet. Uh, we ain't got nowhere to go. Listen to the Bible. Read. I'm a woman, man. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. Therefore, you're going to do what? Serve thine enemy. So the Bible says you're going to serve your enemy, just like you've heard before, right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible actually points out who the enemies are. Read. Wish the, wish the Lord shall sin against thee. So God sent our enemies against us because we broke his commandments. Right. That's why Moses was warning them of future prophecy. They was going to be serving their enemies. Read. In hunger. In what? In hunger. For example, like I asked a brother, I said, well, you got to go to get food, right? Where do we go to get food today? To the grocery stores. Grocery stores. Do your family own it? Do your people own them grocery stores? Not at all. Walmart, uh, Kroger's, all those different stores? No. They're owned by what the Bible says is your enemy. Your enemy. Right. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. If you want something to drink, where you got to go? You don't own water reservoirs. Nope. Your family own water reservoirs? Just like I was saying to him, you can't take a bucket and collect a natural resource that falls from the sky. That's actually illegal here. Right. If they caught you catching uh, catching water that falls from the sky, you could get locked up for it. They right. You know. right. They say you're stealing. Stealing. stealing a natural resource. That's how you know you're in the lands of your enemies. Right? That's right. And in nakedness. If you want clothes, where you got to go? We don't own these textile fabrics. We don't own this. You might have companies, Sean John, Rockefeller, and whatnot, but they don't own the textiles that create this stuff. Right. They're owned by our oppressors. Read. And in want of all things. And in want in all things. Anything you want. Birth certificate, death certificate, license, Christianity, like you mentioned. Right. That came from our enemies. Jeez. Christianity was not originated by us. Christianity right. was formed by our oppressors to keep us in bondage. Right. Right. So we never know this history in the Bible. Right. Read. And he, and he, and he, the same enemy that's up top in the verse, he, a shall, man, read, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Wait a minute. Moses was talking to the Israelites, telling them that their enemies were going to put yokes of iron on their neck. Read that again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who had yokes of iron on their neck? I'm about to say, say your pigeons right there. Read that again. Yeah. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who is that, brother? Who is that talking about? Who had yokes of iron on their neck? Teach. Slave. Is that hard to understand? 
So Moses was speaking to the Israelites, right? Right. Saying that they will have yokes of iron put upon their necks. You see it? Oh, yes, slave. Right. Are those our ancestors? Do you have ancestors that were in slavery? Do you have ancestors that were in slavery? So if Moses said that the Israelites had yokes upon their neck, what does that make you? That makes you No, that makes you, you were a slave, right? But what is your nationality? Because he said the Israelites, which is a nation, would have yokes of iron upon their neck. Your ancestors had yokes of iron upon their neck. Right. So that means you're Israelite. That's right. Is that hard to understand? Not at all. Why has nobody ever taught you that? Bring it out. Because it, it, especially here in America, there's a uh, there's a reason why they don't teach you that. Why? So that way you don't know that you are powerful. You don't right. you don't know that you got uh, your soul and your spirit so has power. Uh, or right. They they know over everything. Exactly. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just a. Uh, it's not a metal or iron yoke now. Right. It's more of a mental yoke. You know really? what I'm saying? So we finish that verse out. So you said it's not yoke of iron, it's it's, it's mental, mental, right? Yoke now. Let's see if the scriptures say that. Read the uh last part. Until he have destroyed thee. So we have yokes of iron upon our necks until we are destroyed. So they took them off because now we don't think we're slaves. Now they don't need yokes of iron for us to keep supporting their kingdom. Right. For us to keep supporting their homes, their houses. Right. Now it's mentally. Yeah. We serve them without them telling us to serve them. Bring it up. Right. By working for them. By going into all uh, these so-called Sunday churches, learning their histories, their doctrines. Right. Their lies that they've been teaching you. Right. That's what's keeping us in bondage. We're in mental bondage. Yeah. They don't need the iron no more, the physical iron. Because so guess what? You think they do it in a, in a casual way? Nah. They put it right in front of your face and, and you don't realize it. It's, right. I'm going to show you how. Basically, it's like the, you ever heard the Willie Lynch papers, right? Right. How you divide the people, you know, right. mentally from old to young, light to dark and everything like that. If you can get their mentality into hating each other right. and being split, they'll ne will, will never come up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, you're on and, point. And, and that, you Willie, that Willie Lynch movement has a lot to do with it. Yep. Has a lot to do with it because what, they, what have they done to Willie Lynch? They reversed the roles. Yep. Right? They told you that the woman is supposed to be the head, the man should be behind you, behind the woman. Right? They beat the men in front of the women. Right. To right? To, to strip us from our masculinity. Right. right. To teach us that we're not gods. Because who is this on his son? Because right with that, right with that mindset, they put this up in the churches, right? And they have our people looking at that saying that that's who? That, that's, that's our, that's our right? savior. They saying that that's our yeah, savior. Man, that's our savior. He's going to save us out of captivity when he's the generation that he's put us in captivity. In captivity. Right. Makes absolutely no sense. Right. But what does the Bible say? The Bible that's been in the churches. The Bible that they never fully read in the churches to tell you what Christ looks like. Jesus. Let's see what the Bible says. Give me that in Revelation. We're going to go straight to it to cast down this image. Because this is not Christ according to the Bible. Hey. And they know that image is everything. If you look up to an image, not only will you worship it, but you want to be like yeah. it. Right. You'll blind your hair. You'll cut that natural wool off that God has himself. Right. You'll want to walk after his ways, after his policies. Right. But God has his own policies in the scriptures. Jeez. We have to follow that to get out of captivity. Right. Let's see what Christ looks like. Give me that. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it up. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the revelation of Christ. The root of revelation is revealed. Christ had to be revealed in the scriptures because this false image will pop up one day. Right. Now we can go to the scriptures. We can read now, Master. Right. We can go to the scriptures and read for ourselves that Christ did not look like this. That's right. Man. Give me verse 14. Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it up. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, Christ's head and his hairs were white like wool. Who has woolly hair on the face of the earth? Who has woolly hair? If you don't mind, take your hat off. Let's see who has woolly hair. That's wool according to the Bible. That's right. right. This is wool. That's wool according to the Bible. Right. Is that wool? Nah, nah. Is that hard to understand? That look like it's been permed. Yeah. Right. That's not hard to understand. It look like it's been permed. Straight it's been permed. and killed. That's what they want us to do to our own hair so we forget that Christ had woolly hair, just like his father. Right. And white in color. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it says Christ's eyes were as a flame of fire. Is his eyes red as a flame of fire? No. This false image does not have, his whites of his eyes are white. It's not red. Right. Why was his eyes red? Why was Christ's eyes red? Yeah. No, because, that's not the reason. Because he was, um, he had been through so much pain and agony. What was his first miracle? Yeah. Ah, Bring it up. Uh, turn water, water, into water to wine. Right. So he didn't pour that wine out, he drank it. Ah, so that's what did it. That's why the whites of his eyes turned red. Give you that. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Oh, this is a prophecy of Christ before he even existed. 
technically in a physical form in Genesis. It's telling you why his eyes was red, read. His eyes shall be red with wine. Look, all we gotta do is go to the scriptures for understanding. I don't have to pull your arm to tell you that Christ's eyes was red with wine. It says it in the scriptures. Right. That his hair was like wool. But our people do not that read. That we look up to this like image and think everything wrong. is right. Right, again. He said, and his skin was we gonna wrong. get there. Give me verse 15, Revelation 1 and 15. Verse 15. And his feet. And his feet. So Christ's feet. If you look at the top of your foot, right? Most likely it's the color as the rest of your body. Bring it up. Right? So his feet, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Kind of like caramel color. Caramel, I can take that. Right, brown, right? Mm -hmm. like so brass is brown, like a penny. Yeah. Exactly. Is that hard to understand? No. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. So if you take that penny and throw it in a fire, what color does it turn? It gets darker. It gets darker. Yep. It gets black. So what is right. that saying about Christ? What does that say? Let's make it plain. Hey man, keep what is, what is it? it says Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. That's right. Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. Right. It's that simple. Why do they not teach you this? Because they don't want you to know. Because guess what? If I look up to this image, I won't care about the other one. Right. I'll sell drugs to the generation of those people. Right. I won't raise a child that looked like that. If right. I knew that Christ looked like this, if I think that Christ looked like this, I would never care about the other people on the other side. Right. Yeah. And vice versa. Now that you know what Christ looks like, you should care more about his generation than this generation. Yes, right. Right. This generation has lied to you. Right. This generation has pushed lies to our peoples for thousands of years. Right. And want to keep us in captivity. But guess what? It's our job to wake our people up. Right. To show you that you're not Negro. You're not color. You're not spit. You're not coons. You're part of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's yes, right. right. That is your nationality according to the scriptures. Right. right. Now you know his true image. Read that, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evident. So it said it is evident. What does it mean when something is evident? I mean, you got proof of it. You got proof of it. This is the proof. The right. Bible is the proof. Read. For it is evident that our Lord. Why didn't it say everybody's Lord? All right. It says our Lord. That's a possessive word. Our Lord. Not everybody else's. Read. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Out of where? Out of Judah. Let me read that flyer, brother. Our Lord sprang out of Judah. Right. So guess what that means? That means that since you come from the tribe of Judah, since you're an Israelite, the same blood that flowed through Christ's flame flows in yours. Right. The same blood. Christ looks like us, and we look like Christ. Right. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Read it Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Guess what? This image teaches you to hate your brother. Automatically, just by it being present, teaches you to hate your brother. Right. right. Because you'll look at that and be like, those are the only people I got to care about. Right. right. I want to live like him. I want to have hair like him. So if you see uh, brothers and sisters that have hair like Christ, you'll hate them. Right. Because that's not the image you was raised to worship. Right. right. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. But well, we can't hate our brother in our hearts. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke your neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. So we can't suffer sin upon our people. Right. But our people hate correction. Right. But well, we have to get correction in order to get out of our condition. Right. Because we are in captivity this day. Right. And everybody say they want to get the kingdom of heaven. But they don't want to show actions forth proving that they want to get into heaven. Right. right. But the kingdom of heaven is only for you. Right. So That's why not right. seek after it? Why not change your life? Right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.